Hey out there nerdites, today on Comic Talk Quick Talk we're slinging out the news on Spider-Man Homecoming and how Spider-Man sits in the Marvel Universe. So guys, this week we have a couple of episodes where we'll be talking about Marvel's serious push on Netflix. And we're going to discuss how we feel about the new Punisher Netflix series. Also to wrap the week up, we've got a big show on the Merc with a Mouth, Senior Chimichanga himself, Deadpool. Actually, we have a poll on our Facebook right now to see who you guys think is the best actor to play Cable. Follow the link in the box below or click the direct links below to get straight to the poll itself. So, with the release of Captain America Civil War, we officially have our newest iteration of Spider-Man, Tom Holland. Honestly, this may be the first time in a really long time that I haven't seen a whole bunch of people get all uppity about the fact that actors have been switched and essentially the entire history of Spider-Man in cinema past has been erased. I think most Spidey fans hoped that Amazing Spider-Man would redeem the problems that fell upon emo Spider-Man and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, but honestly, Andrew Garfield never really sat right as our Spider-Man at all. Also, the Amazing Spider-Man franchise really couldn't go anywhere that previous films hadn't already gone without making it seem regurgitated. So I think with most of the disappointment felt by fans, it was actually deserved, especially after Amazing Spider-Man 2. That Tom Holland and Marvel mashup, though, that is truly a thing of legend. I was pretty convinced we wouldn't see a Marvel version of Spider-Man, but after Sony's loss with their run, it makes sense to let Marvel take a stab at it. I mean, with distribution and promotion alone, Sony could profit more with a well-written story that actually lends itself to a much bigger universe than just Peter Parker New York. And if any one production company could do it, Kevin Feige and Marvel are absolutely the right hands to pass it off to. So rumors are abuzz about Spider-Man Homecoming, but here are the things that we do know for sure. The film is set to release as of now, July 7th, 2017. We know that this story will follow a high school version of Peter Parker. Thankfully, we won't be seeing an origin story again, since it has been done plenty over the course of Spidey's cinematic history. Also, with Civil War, we know that Marissa Tomei is our new Aunt May, and honestly, this has to be the hottest Aunt May I have ever seen in my entire life. I do sometimes find myself having a bit of a struggle believing that she is that character, but then I'm like, damn, Tomei, you hot as hell. Also, it does make sense to the story, since we're seeing a much younger version of Peter Parker than we're used to, so overall, I'm not really worried about the choice here. Robert Downey Jr. will have a cameo in this movie at some point. There really isn't a way around this. Tony Stark supplied Spidey with his actual suit in Captain America Civil War, so it's gonna happen. The director of this film, John Watts, is a fairly unknown director, but if you happen to be a horror fan like I am, I suggest you check out his Eli Roth presented movie, Clown. If you have a fear of clowns though, I still suggest you see this. Think thinner, but with a clown demon. Strangely though, Watts has stated that Spidey Homecoming will have a very John Hughesy vibe, so I'm incredibly interested to see how they're gonna pull this off. I'm hoping there's no parade float musical scenes unless they can somehow get Deadpool involved. I could totally dig that. With writer John Francis Daly on board for pre-production, I'm sure that the Breakfast Club vibe will come across very easily. If you don't know who Daly is, you may know him as Sam Weir from Freaks and Geeks, or Lance Sweets from Bones, or maybe the Quiet Trainee from Waiting. He's actually a really talented writer, and almost all the movies I've seen from him, I have thoroughly enjoyed. Horrible Bosses 1 and 2, Vacation, the Incredible Burt Wonderstone, come on. You know that movie had its moments, even if Jim Carrey was high on DMT the whole time. The biggest rumor and all the buzz about this movie is really who is the main villain. Watts and Marvel have blatantly stated that the antagonist of this film will be one that hasn't been seen yet in the Spider-Man cinematic franchise, which led tons of geeks and Spidey lovers to jump straight to Vulture. I mean, it is possible, but the funniest part about people jumping on Vulture is that fans immediately named Michael Keaton to play the role. Now, I am pretty sure that that is somewhat typecasting on a widespread nerd basis. Guys, just because he was in Birdman doesn't mean he should play the Vulture. I honestly would love to see a high pedigree actor take a stab at a Marvel character. Not that Keaton isn't of that caliber. I just really think that someone like John Malkovich or even Daniel Day-Lewis 
would be interesting to see how they work those characters out. It does make sense for them to have the Vulture as the baddie for Homecoming, but I also would really love to see a great Marvel Doc Ock revamp. I love Alfred Molina, who played him in Spider-Man 2, and I love Sam Raimi's take on the character, but I think that villain really deserves a second look. As far as who could play that role, I really don't know, honestly. I'd almost say bring Molina back if it wouldn't cause an insane amount of confusion, but that's a hard role to cast. I've seen some people suggest Gerard Butler, but that's not my Doc Ock. I'm sorry. So now that we know Spidey is officially in the MCU, it's safe to assume all bets are off. I think as long as Spider-Man Homecoming does well in the box office and gets reviewed well, he will not only secure his role as an Avenger in the MCU franchise, but he might also bring other Sony properties back into the hands of their creators. Even if Sony may still have their finger on them somewhere, at least there's potential for Marvel to bring some of their better franchises up from the ashes. That wasn't a Phoenix joke, but it totally works. So expect to see Spidey appear in most, if not all future Avengers movies or movies with large Marvel ensembles like the anticipated Infinity War films. So guys, that's everything that we know about Spider-Man Homecoming as of right now. There are tons of rumors and leaked info, but not much of it is really credible because we don't really know that much about the film. But of the things we do know for a fact, I must say I'm pretty impressed with the decisions made not only by Marvel, but ultimately really by Sony. Sony. I mean, that's a huge step to trade off a franchise that has made them a ton of money in the past with just a hope that Marvel can clean up their mess. But with Tom Holland, Kevin Feige, and even Robert Downey Jr. in play, it's really hard to say that it won't. Marvel makes smart choices with who they cast in all aspects of production, so I have complete faith. All right, nerdites, that's it for us today. Don't forget to keep sending in your comic collection submissions. You can post a picture or video on any social media with the hashtag Comic Talk Collector to have your collection featured on an episode. As per usual, all the links are down there. Till next time, Nerdites, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and support.